Hello and it's time for Meet the Maker. Today we are talking to Sherry Collins from Eternal Posey. So hello Sherry, come on, tell us all about your business, why it started, how you started it, the inspiration behind it and what's the name? Tell me all about it, I'd love to know. Basically, it's um, Eternal Posey is all paper flowers. Um, it's been going for a few years now, but obviously the eternal is because they last. Yeah, and the posy, obviously, because I mainly do weddings um, and I didn't want bouquet or anything like that. But I thought, you know, eternal posy, it sounds nice it um, and it leads on, I think. So, so, yeah. How did you get into making paper flowers? Where did that come from? How did that start? It, Completely fluke. It was my um, children's, I, I needed a leaving present. You know how we all get leaving presents <laughs> to teachers, especially in year six. You've got to get something good. Yeah. You've got to get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and YouTube and Pinterest. And I was just, I wanted something different. Um, the particular teacher had really helped with reading. Um, so I wanted something with books. And then I saw these roses and I thought, that's, that's, yep, yeah, that's what I want. Took a little bit of practice, um, but I got there and and that's how it all started. Yeah. So did you make the roses from books? Was it yes. all written words? Yeah, it all the children's, books? yeah, children's books, um, roses, and then I dabbled with a couple of other flowers um and made a big basket bouquet. Um and she's still got it on display. So wow. And how and long that's quite a few that years now? now. That would be Oh God, they're in now in year eleven. So oh, wow. five years, yeah, four, five wow. years. Yeah. But doesn't that actually then completely prove your name of Eternal Flowers yeah. at five <laughs> years on? They're still there. They're still on yeah. display, and I yeah. bet they still look gorgeous as well. Yeah, I like that. That's yeah. really cool. I like that when you think of it in that those terms. Oh, so yeah. my next question was, can you remember your first sale? But it wasn't really your first sale. That was your first gift. But it was the first yeah. gift. Yeah. Oh, how fantastic. Yeah. So now you've already mentioned that it's mainly weddings that you do. Yeah. yeah. So why weddings? What do you add um, to weddings? I well, I love weddings. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love a good wedding? I know. Any excuse but for I'm, that? Yes, but I'm I'm a geek at heart. So all the Harry Potter and the um steampunk and the comic books and all that stuff that's constantly going on in our house. Um but I wanted to bring that into weddings um, in a different way. And and you're on dodgy it. ground there, aren't you? And I'm not, I'm not, bit. I know you do do it properly and you yeah. do do it okay. But your first thing you've said is like, Harry, you can't go around saying, I'm going to give you no. Harry Potter flowers for your weddings, can you? No, no, <laughs> can't mention it at all. <laughs> <laughs> which makes, yeah, which makes selling a little bit tricky <laughs> because you've got to work around Ooh. it. But there is workarounds and it's it's the comic books, it's the, you know, book lovers and all that kind of wording is generally what I, I can use. So um, you're basically repurposing the comic pages into, and turning them into flowers? Yes, which is completely legal. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're allowed to sell them. Exactly. You're just not allowed to call them. There, if you look at that one, that's a oh, Kusadama flower but it's actually, I'm no good with the camera. It's comic <laughs> books. So, so yeah, that's an example yeah. of the comic book. But you can't, I don't, what, what particular comic book is that one? That one is um, Marvel. Okay, so, but you, so you can't, can't, what you can't do is you can't no. say, come and buy this Marvel paper flower, no. but you can sell a product that isn't made yes. from a Marvel comic. Yes, and when in conversation with my couples, um, if they want a specific character, which a lot of people do, they, you know, they have a favourite, then yeah. I can definitely, you know, bring all that in and include it all. Yeah. Oh, I just can't advertise it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes it all good fun. I know. <laughs> Does that mean that you only do the comics? I mean, you've mentioned Harry Potter, you've mentioned Marvel, but we've also said that you can do um, paper from books. Is that anything that you basically can't... any paper that i can get my hands on i will use 
So wrapping paper, books, magazines, um, comics, but as well, just colored paper or crepe paper. So I've got, uh, where are we? A, oh, it's that camera again. Don't know how well that'll show up. That's oh, a that's color cool. lily. And that's just crepe paper that's been colored for um, the bride's specific choice. Or roses. So you colored that paper as well? Yes, that was just white paper. I've got a glare on my screen that's not helping. Oh, that's and it's got a purple yeah. tint at the bottom. Um, but yeah, if you just want flowers that look like flowers, then you can have those too. Fantastic. But quirky, because they're not going to die. <laughs> you don't yeah, need to go them. Anywhere. And they're not going to wilt on your day. You don't need to worry about finding a vase halfway through your day to put your bouquet in. I have one question, which I'm sure is probably one that you're asked quite a lot. What happens if it rains? This is paper. I've, I've got you covered. I've got you covered. <laughs> I had a feeling that you was, Yes, that was one of my main concerns because a lot of paper florists are in um, Australia and America and generally they don't have to worry about the rain so much. Um, but I spent a lot of time um, trying to find the best way to do it. I went through wax and all this kind of stuff, which is which is great if you're putting on a cake, um, yeah. but not too great if it's really hot um, and it does affect the color as well. Right. So um, I spray them. It's artist's spray. It gives it a bit of UV protection as well, oh, wow. but it, it means that they're protected from the rain. So unless you're in a complete downpour, which you're not going to want to be. Gonna 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 up, up, yeah. That's going to that's gonna do everything. <laughs> yeah. But caught in a shower, they're absolutely fine. Oh, that's no good. Worries. Yeah. Ooh, I like it. I do. I think your flowers are absolutely stunning. You know, I've looked at your, some of your photos before and I've looked at some of your work and I've gone, how is that not real? That I'm sure you've kind of got real flowers and you photograph them. But you're sure <laughs> me you haven't, which kind of does nope, say. Nothing the, real. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Where do you sell? Where can people find you? Generally, um, I do sell on Etsy, but generally people find me um, on my website or Facebook, Instagram. They all sort of filter through to the same place. But I um, assume you end up, for the most part, having quite a lot of conversations with your yes. with your brides mainly. I'm assuming brides um, yeah. with your brides mainly to, to kind of really knuckle down on what it is that they want. And it truly is a bespoke order rather than just yes. choosing your colours and your yeah. style of there's, power. Yeah, there's not many things that are ready to go. Basically, everything is 100% how you want it, whether it's right down to shades, what books you want, what style, everything is designed completely for you. So... So do you do everything as well? Have you got like the buttonholes and the bouquets? Yeah. And can you yeah, do them? buttonholes, corsages, table decor, uh, whatever you want. If you want it all matching, it's ready to go, yeah. Exciting. Exciting. Yeah. And so personally, I, I mean, I got married back in 2003 and I was probably quite cautious and traditional. In fact, I wasn't quite. I was very cautious and traditional with everything. Yeah. Whereas actually I think it's much more... It's going to sound quite contradictory, but it's much more normal to be much more unique and personalised and bring your own personality into it now, even than it was, yeah. which isn't that long ago, but it's still, it's been a change, hasn't there? Yeah, big change. People want, they want what they want now. They don't want to just follow everybody else. They want their wedding to be unique and to reflect them 100%. So, yeah. And even if that's just the touch of a, buttonhole or the touch of a couple of different flowers within the yeah, definitely you don't have to go full hog although a lot of people do and it's great <laughs> you can just have subtle little elements that just bring out your personality without being too full-on yeah. yeah that's brilliant really really exciting though obviously lately we're we're talking and it's early january 2021 the wedding industry has gone through a bit of a crazy nearly a year right now and we don't know when the end is but one of the other advantages that you've got here is that actually your flowers last yes so yeah. it, you you can have them early and have them ready and sat there waiting for you yeah. or you can have them closer to the day and it there's no issues that there's going to be a problem with your flowers no everything no is panic yeah no everything is boxed up and delivered to you um 
in plenty of time for your wedding but if anything changes they're quite happy in the box um for as long as you need them yeah perfect yeah brilliant okay so my next question everybody's hating my next question <laughs> so my next question is the reason you do your business is you love your making, you love creating your flowers, you love spending your time being creative. But one of the big jobs that has to be done is marketing. Do you love it or hate it? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going on today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Way out of my comfort zone, definitely. And I'm why getting is that? there. Why is um, that because you've got to step up and you've got to go, hey, this is great, when actually because yeah. you've made it, that's a little bit personal. And it, I think as kids we were all told, oh, don't show off and don't do this and don't. So it's almost breaking yeah. that rule, if you can call it a rule. Yeah, and you've got to um, – it feels like you're forcing yourself on everybody, but not everybody's seeing it. So you have to keep forcing yourself <laughs> again and again, and they might see it. Yeah. And if they do, then they'll come back. But it's it's just getting over that hurdle of of keep on, just keep with it, just keep going. Though, if I remember being a bride, which it might be a while ago, but I do remember it, then actually you're quite obsessed with all things wedding at that point. And you can't see too much of anything to do with weddings and getting uh, ideas and, yeah. and seeing things. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I, I do know that from your perspective, it does feel like, oh, am yeah. I going to be annoying people yet? Yeah. You can't. You're You're... Flowers are gorgeous. We have to get them out there. You have to be seen. <laughs> okay, so what do you love most about running your own business? What's the best thing for you? I love getting the response from my brides. It's yeah. oh, it's, it's brilliant. Absolutely love it. Yeah. So do yeah, you when tend they first to open that box because they don't always want photos beforehand. Some do. And they want photos throughout the process, and which I'm more than happy to do. Um, but others are just, you know, wait and surprise when the box opens. And that's, love it. Yeah. Are your, do your brides tend to send you photos of from the wedding as well? Do you get that afterwards? They do. Yes. Not all of them. Um, because especially when they're waiting for the professional photos, that can take, you know, yeah. quite a while. But um, even if it's just photos of them getting them out of the box and a quick snap in the morning. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I love sharing Your face well. lights up, Jen. You absolutely <laughs> light up. They, I, can, I can really tell that really is kind of what you look it about. Is. Yeah, yeah. And for you personally... Obviously, running your own business means that you kind of set your own hours, you have a bit of flexibility and you have some freedom in how you work. Is yeah. that important to you as well? It is, especially at the minute with the kids being <laughs> home. <as well. laughs> oh. Yeah, but because of the way that I book my orders in, um, I allow for family life so I know that I've got plenty of time to get an order done um plenty of time to allow for postage issues and anything else that life wants to throw at me and it's not gonna interfere with getting those flowers done so yeah, yeah. you're quite strict with your diary then with how yes. much you've got them. yep that's good yeah mm -hmm. that could mean that kind of anybody wants to book you they've got to get in and they've got to got to get yeah. you booked because otherwise yeah. once that space is gone it's gone it is it is <laughs> Lots of small business owners, the ones that I know, there's quite a few that struggle with boundaries, that struggle with that kind of that switch off, like, oh, I don't want to yeah. let them down, I can't say no to an order or anything else. It's really good to have those boundaries and to know. Yeah, um, yeah that's a real But it thing. also gives me a chance, if there is a late, a last minute change of plan and somebody needs to, you know, needs something quickly, I have got the flexibility to shuffle things around if need be. Yes, because you've given yourself that, but you're prioritizing the people who you're already working with rather than, yes. yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. So what are the biggest challenges you face as a business, a business owner? I have a feeling you're probably going to say coronavirus. <laughs> it's not helping. <laughs> it's not helped at all, has it? It has, it has made this last year tough. Yeah, Very tough. Of set rides. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, I do know that I can move you know move them quite easily because I don't make anything unless they've requested it until closer to the time um and I'm not having to get in anything fresh um then you know I've got my stuff just sitting there waiting basically and if if dates need to be rearranged then that's 
generally not an issue. So, yeah. How do you normally work with your your brides? Is it normally that they have that you have lots of messages go back and forth, lots of emails or phone calls? How does that normally work? Most brides, it's a lot of messages. Um, some are email, but generally um, messenger is because then they can easily quickly send photos of things that they like on Pinterest. Um, and we can work from all of those different ideas um, as well as them being able to see um, what I what I do already um, yeah. because everything's on Facebook. So generally that's that's the way most of it goes. Although I am open to video calls <laughs> <laughs> as well as phone calls. Um, yeah. depends. I, I'm easy. I work with whatever is, is best for my couples. So, oh, yeah. That's good. That's really good. So my next question is where do you get the inspiration for your new designs and for the new things that you do? But I suppose yours is actually – it's the flowers and it's the geekiness and it's just matching those up. So do you automatically yeah. kind of know that that particular style will that suit that particular type of flower or do you experiment and play? I do a lot of experimenting. Once I know um, roughly what um, a couple want, if they've got a specific flower that they love, then obviously that's going to be incorporated. But as far as bringing everything together, it is a bit of an experiment and I can have a few different things on the go. And it's not until you actually start putting it all together that it, it comes together. And then you think, yes, actually, that's that's the one. Or no, that's got to come out and I've got to put something else in. So, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you enjoy it, though. It's yes. you enjoy yeah. that. Is that your favorite time when you're doing your making? Yes. And you experiment yeah, just leave me in a corner. Just <laughs> all you need is some paper, and you're happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Okay, no, so last question. You'll be relieved to know. If you could share one tip for someone who is starting out right now with their own handmade business, or may maybe they're doing weddings, um, what would that tip be? What would you What would you tell them? Um, I think do something you actually enjoy. There's no point thinking of money, although, yes, we all want money um, and, and fame and all that jazz. It, you've got to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to you're not going to carry on because it's just going to get on top of you and you'll give up. So, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Words of wisdom. Definitely. You have to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I back that up that with the marketing you have to find the marketing platforms that you actually will enjoy using yes. because otherwise you're not going to use them. It's as yeah. simple as that. It becomes a battle otherwise or what you need to do and should do and yeah. it becomes a chore and that and it doesn't work then. So, yeah, it, it it's almost all parts of your business that you have yeah. to enjoy it. You have to love it. But I, know, I can tell that you love yours, which is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Sherry. It's been an absolute pleasure to have a chance to get to meet you properly, <laughs> even though I already kind of did know you properly. But in this format, it's been absolutely yeah. lovely. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>